Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Cap Filmmaker. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at that Tears of the Kingdom Master Sword effect. Let's dive in. For this effect, you're going to need one piece of footage, and that's a view of the sword. I have a plastic Master Sword, but you can use any other sword that you want. Once you've got your footage, let's hop into After Effects. Okay, so we're going to import our footage and create a new composition. Now to add the glow to the sword, we're going to have to rotoscope it. So use the rotoscope tool and the mask tool to create a perfect mask around the sword. This may take a couple minutes, but it's worth it because you want to be as accurate as possible. Now you should have an isolated layer of the sword. So you're going to duplicate that and delete the rotobush on the first layer. That way you have the background and the sword on two separate layers. Now we're going to add the blue to the sword. So go up to the effects controls panel and search curves. Then apply that to the layer. Now for my shot, I chose to make my sword blue to better match the game, however you can do any color you want. Simply use the different color channels to boost certain colors. As an example, for blue, lower the red and higher the blue up. This will create a nice bluey tint. Don't forget to boost the brightness with the RGB channel. Next we're going to add the glow. Simply search glow in the effects controls and apply it to the layer. You can tweak the settings to how you want. I did my best to match the game itself, here's a reference image if you need it. You can see that unlike a lightsaber, rather than having a white core, it has more of a bluish core, which is what I tried to emulate in the video. You may also need to adjust the rotoburst settings. You might have to adjust the feather or maybe the mask expansion. It's up to you. It's a really free effect that you can do. In my shot, I decided to add a white background to the sword. You don't need to do this, but it looks very good. I just duplicated the layer and added the glow again, except this time I applied the tint so it was more white. Putting this over the top of the sword and lowering the opacity a bit really creates a nice holographic effect. If you want to increase the radius of the sword, you can adjust the mask expansion to further expand the sword outwards. This isn't really required, but it was a cool effect that I added. Now that we've done that, we can pre-compose the two blade layers just to keep everything nice and connected. Now, if you've ever seen a J.J. Abrams film, you know that anything that produces light should produce a lens flare. To do that, simply create a new solid, make it black, and apply the lens flare effect. From here, set the layer to screen, and now we're going to make it follow the blade itself. Head over to the tracker panel and select track motion. Now move the track point to somewhere that it can recognize on the blade. I chose this little emblem on the front of the master sword, but you can choose where you want to do it on your blade. Now press the play button and let After Effects do its thing. Once it's done, create a new null object. Then select edit target and select the null object. Then press apply and now you'll have a null stuck to the master sword. Next, enter the effects panel for the lens flare and apply it to the null object. This will make sure that the lens flare is perfectly stuck to the master sword. Now you can tweak the lens flare to your liking. As an example, I chose the 105mm prime lens, but you can choose whatever you want. I also added a curves effect to make it more blue, similar to the master sword itself. In my shot, I wanted the glow to fade in naturally, so what I did was I animated the glow in each of the effects to gradually go down and go up when it was needed. Now it's time to add some fake light to my subject. First of all, I created an adjustment layer and then added the curves and the glow effect. I did a similar thing that I did for the Master Sword, creating a slight blue tint and a glow. After this, I created a mask around where I wanted the light to be and feathered it a lot. Of course, digital lighting will never be physical, so if you can put a physical light on your subject, I would. It's just in this case, it wasn't really viable. I then did the same thing that I did for the Master Sword. I animated it in so it would glow up slowly and then glow out slowly as well. I then did a little bit of color grading, and then your effect should be completed. Let's have a look. The battle was so long ago. All the pain, all the suffering, it's drifted into legend. But it was all because of him. We may have defeated him back then. But now he's back. And I will have to endure the pain once more. I must finish what I started all those years ago. I'll do my best. 
Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more like this, like and subscribe, and leave a comment on what you think we should do next week. With that out of the way, I gotta get back to Tears of the Kingdom. See you later.